everybody RC here for First Shot School. Listen, we're in the middle of set changes in between classes here and I wanted to take a moment to just kind of cover a little bit of before and after processing that I did on some recent trip to Cuba. So I went out to borrow lenses and I rented a GFX camera as well as rented a Tamron lens to go out on two different Cuba visits and I've made a couple blog posts about it, but I figured I would come back and share with you kind of the step-by-step -step processing that I did on some of the images that I was working with during that trip. So I have a series of images here. We're gonna go through them as quick as possible here. So here's one, here's the second one, there's a third, here's the second one, the third one, the fourth one, right? So there's, there's that one, right? It's a really big file, right? So that's the GFX. And then these were the ones that I shot with the D750. Now, let's go ahead and just take it from the very, very top. I'm going to show you what the original pictures look like. All right, and we'll start with this one. Now, I'm going to switch over to the develop module. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the temperature was a little bit off and the contrast seems to be a little bit low. So that is something that I could always address inside of Lightroom. Right off the bat, before I start making any kind of temperature adjustments, I kind of want to get it within the range. Take a look here at the very, very top. You'll notice that all of my stuff seems to be sitting on this left-hand side. And I tell people that whenever I deal with a histogram or exposure as a whole, I tend to look at it as almost kind of like a bottle of water, right? And I want that water to cover the entire area. Right now, I'm not really covering this area here, so I know that I'm suffering a little bit. To counteract that, I'm going to tip the bottle of water and right? tipping it over takes all of that range and slides it over to one side. By doing that, it makes it a lot better. Now, tipping will usually take that exposure. Contrast, by contrast, takes the center portion of the water and parts it, makes dark parts darker, bright parts brighter. So adding a little bit more contrast into this will give me a little bit more of that scene. Now. I'm losing a little bit of the sky that sits right here, so I'm gonna drop the highlights and I'm gonna increase the shadows. Now watch, I can come down here into dropping this and now I get more of that sky, which lets me then counteract it by increasing some of those shadows. I want to grab still this portion of the image here, so I'm gonna grab the whites and bring the whites over and now I have more of that information back. This is looking a little bit better. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab my temperature and I'm gonna adjust the temperature for the picture and I'm gonna add a little bit of tint to it, ever so slightly. Now, I want to get a little bit more color pop into this picture, so I'm gonna grab the Vibrance slider. Vibrance is something that you use where colors that are underrepresented in an image are amplified a lot. Colors that are overrepresented in an image aren't amplified as much and skin tones are left alone. That happens to be my better choice. So by grabbing my Vibrant slider, notice I can get that a little bit more and now I can make better adjustments as to what I wanna do with my temperature and my tint. I can even bring back a little bit of those whites. Now, these are gonna be global changes that you're gonna to do to something like this. And in a lot of instances, you may not be able to get every portion of the picture right. And to counteract that, you have this brush. By clicking on the brush, you can specify those same changes that you saw in the develop module as well as some other changes on a brush. So if you happen to have your sliders all jacked up because you used it on something else, you could always double click on one of the sliders to reset it or double click on the word effect and it'll reset all of them. Now that I have that set, I can drop the exposure a little bit and I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna paint into this one section. I'm gonna drop the exposure still once I've painted it, then I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast and I'll go ahead and I'll add a little bit of saturation to the shot. You'll notice that now I'm picking up a lot of the sky that I had there and how much of that I do will be personal preference, right? Notice that this is a little bright here, so I'm gonna hit the new button and I'll go ahead and I'll drop that exposure a tiny bit and just bring this down just a tiny bit. The last adjustment that I'd make here would be a new brush. I'll drop the exposure a little bit more and then I'll just darken this area at the very, very bottom. Now, I'm not gonna darken it too much. This is another tip for you. I'll overdo it and then once I have the brush set, I can come back into the exposure slider and adjust it the way that I would want it, add a little bit more contrast and add a little bit more clarity to the bottom of the shot. So there's my before picture, there's after, 
we're looking a lot better, right? If I were to reset this, this is where we were before, and now this is where we are after. So all of these changes you can do right inside of Lightroom. For this picture, all I wanted to do here was just add a little bit of a crop to be able to change the orientation that we have there. So by adding the crop, I'm gonna hit the letter R for the crop tool. I'm gonna hit the letter L for the lights dim mode. That dims the interface, hits the letter L, dims it again some more. I don't want any distracting elements when I'm trying to make a crop adjustment. So now I can go ahead and say, all right, well, this is kind of what I want right there. Double click and I'm good to go. Same thing as before. It looks like we're suffering from some whites. So I'm going to increase some of those whites. I'm going to increase the shadows to bring that in. And my highlights are getting a little blown out there. So I'm going to drop those highlights ever so slightly. If I want to add a little bit more detail into the face, I'm going to use the brush tool, double click to reset the effect, and I'm going to increase the shadows here and just pull some of this information out. If I want to add some more of this on the shirt, I can hit the new button, drop the exposure a little bit, and then just come right in here and adjust it. I can be heavy handed. And then once I get it exactly where I want it, then I can adjust a little bit of the temperature down on the highlights. And now I have another picture that's ready to go. And all of that stuff is done right inside of Lightroom. Now for a picture like this, same problem, right? We're suffering from contrast. We're suffering from a lack of color and we're suffering from clarity. So right off the bat, add a little bit more contrast into the picture, make it a tad brighter. I'm going to jack up my vibrance quite a bit, drop my highlights, and then increase those whites to bring that within a range. That automatically changes a lot of what I was working on here. Now what I need to do is just tone it from a color standpoint the way that I want it. So increase my temperature, increase a little bit of the tint. And by doing so, we have a, a much better image to work with. I'm going to drop the blacks just a little bit more. And at this point, all it is is a question of selectively darkening and brightening portions of the picture. Grab my brush again. I'm going to have this be a much bigger brush and I'm going to paint right on the lower portion of this shot. Once I have that set, I can always go back and add more of that exposure should I need it. I don't need too much more. I'm going to drop the temperature just a little bit. Once I've done that, add a little bit more contrast and we're good to go. Now I'm going to hit a new brush and with that brush, I'm going to use double click to reset those effects and then just darken some portions of this picture here and darken some portions of this picture here. Once we have that set, I'm going to do one more new brush and darken this even further just to get this information that sits inside of the background. Now, I do want a little bit more contrast to this. So to do that, I'm going to use clarity. The clarity slider, when you drag it over the right, adds mid-tone contrast. So it doesn't do it in the shadows of the highlights. It just adds a little bit more of that detail in the mid-tones. Increase a little bit more. Oh, actually, I didn't do, I did that on a brush. I want to actually do this over here. So I'll grab that clarity, drag it over, and now I'll maybe add a little bit more detail into the shot. And now we have something that looks very different from what the original image was. There's the original. There's the resulting image. Now, let's go ahead and move to this one. Same concept. And you're beginning to see a pattern here. A lot of the stuff that you can do, you can do in general adjustments in the basic section in Lightroom and then finish it up by using brush based adjustments. So we need some whites. We need some contrast. We need to up those shadows. And now we have a good portion of detail that we can start working with. Once we've done that, I'm going to add a little bit more vibrance to get some pop. And I'm going to add a little bit more clarity to get some crunch. This is where I usually take a little bit more liberty with cropping. So I'm going to hit the letter R for the crop tool. And I like these kinds of things to be a little bit more cinematic. So I would recommend to you, rather than sticking with the crop that you have, try different types of crops. I'm a big fan of the 16 by 9 look. That tends to give it a little bit more of a cinematic feel. And when you hit the letter F, you can see it looks kind of like a movie style. Right? It kind of looks like a frame from a movie. So 16 by 9 happens to be something that I enjoy uh, shooting and I enjoy seeing it. 
Now, I've done all of these changes to this one picture. So I've talked about crops, I've talked about develops, I've talked about brushes. I'm going to go over to this one shot here. How do I apply that work to this? Well, if I hit the letter D, I did all of these changes and those changes are similar from the picture that I did before. Here's another tip. Rather than going through all of this process here, I would recommend that you hit this previous button. By hitting the previous button, that will apply all of the settings that we did in the previous image, provided you to make any other changes. Now at this point, all I need to do is just compensate for some of the changes that I did that are specific to this picture. And in no time flat, I went from one shot to another shot and I didn't necessarily have to go through the entire rigmarole of how to do this. That is something that I think will help you. Now, probably the last shot that I want to talk about is this one. And this was a panning shot that I did with the Tamron lens. So I like the shot. There's really not that much to it. All I want to do is add a little bit more dynamism by adding contrast and adding a little bit of temperature. So I'm going to grab the contrast, bring this over here, bring in a little bit more temperature, bring in those whites, right, quite a bit, drop those highlights, and then add a little bit of clarity. Now, because I wanted to have a little bit of motion inside of this shot, I'm going to go back into that crop. And I'm going to set the crop to 16 by 9 and lights out to kind of get it exactly where I want it. That looks pretty good. The last effect that I would do from here is probably go to the effects and darken some of those corners. Now, hopefully this will give you some ideas on how to be able to work with your pictures inside of Lightroom. At First Shot School, I've designed a free class. It's 10 lessons on the things that you should know inside of Lightroom and Photoshop. Make sure you go to firstshotschool.com and take a look at all of the different courses that I have there. Photoshop, Lightroom Photography, DSLR Video, and so much more. You can take a look at all of the classes right on the page. Also have that special link. Make sure that you go to this link, right? So it's rcweb.co slash 10 tips RC. I'll go ahead and I'll post it in the video as well. That will get you to the 10 essential tips class and this is for free. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it and hopefully I can see you guys over at First Shot School. My name is RC. Thanks for watching.